I've been on, uh, on television, radio and stages for my, well, I think entire working life. And it still petrifies me. I mean, every time I have to present somewhere, no matter how small or unimportant it is, I always secretly hope that it isn't going to happen. So, every time uh, something w goes wrong technically, like with the sound system, or when the audience is a few minutes late, or even <laughs> if I go to the bathroom and I, I'm not able to unlock the door right away, I think to myself, oh, maybe it's not going to happen. And, and that's always because I always think or thought that I wasn't bright enough or quick or beautiful enough, not perfect enough. And my solution to this was to work even harder to reach perfection. But then I, I always had this question, what is perfection? And to me, uh, perfection was sticking to the rules. So, for instance, uh, what do you do with your hands? Well, there's this rule, not like this, in your pocket. But then what is he doing? On a stage, hand in his pocket. And, and there, you, you probably know it, this other rule, that you should never stand like this, huh? makes you look very closed and uh, defensive. But she, she's very often interviewing like this. And you probably know it, the rule as well. Um, I was always told that I shouldn't run around on the stage, you know, <laughs> because, because that really makes you look like, like a caged animal. Sadly, in the next 18 minutes when I do our chat, four Americans that are alive will be dead through the food that they eat. My name's Jamie Oliver, I'm 34 years old. I'm from Essex in England. And uh, for the last seven years I've worked fairly tirelessly to uh, save lives in my own way. Yeah. So Jamie Oliver, and Oprah and Bill Gates, they really confused me because, I mean, let's be honest, they're not sticking to the rules at all. And everybody wants to listen to them. And there, and there are also rules huh, about the way we speak, about the way we're talking. So if I have to speak somewhere, I always rehearse my lines again and again and again because, I mean, I, I want to speak fluently because stumbling or stuttering on a stage, I mean, that's really the worst thing that can happen to me. I have a, a problem. It's not the worst thing in the world. I'm fine. I'm not on fire. I know that other people in the world have far worse things to, to deal with, but for me, Language and music are inextricably linked through this one thing. That's Megan Washington. She's a, maybe you know her. She's a, a, a very popular Australian singer. And yes, she has a stutter. And I'm so glad that she held this talk because, I mean, you should watch the whole talk because it's an amazing talk. So it doesn't matter. And what about speaking in a monotone? You know, I'll, I'll try to... I'm, I'm not an actress, so I'm not very, very good in this, but what, what if I would speak like this, and it's, it's all low, and it's, and it's all the same? Then I think it would be, in the end, in the end, it would be really boring to listen to. As a magician, I try to create images that, that make people stop and think. I also try to challenge myself to do things that doctors say are not possible. So, 
I mean, this is David Blaine, and the, and the first time I saw this talk, the first few seconds, I thought, this is really, really awful. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I don't have a list where I write down awful talks, but I mean, this one would be in the top three, I think. But then, after a few seconds, I kept on watching, and in the end, it turned out to be really heart-stopping, not boring at all. So what I discovered is, is that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if your face turns all red, if, you, if you're standing here, it doesn't matter if you never finish a sentence, even if you would do a headstand here or, or stand here naked on the stage, it doesn't matter. As long as it doesn't interfere with your message or strengthens it. So perfection isn't sticking to the rules. It's discovering your own rules. What makes you shine. It's your personal perfection. And I was doing, 30 years ago, when I started, I was doing something completely different. I mean, I was, as I told you, huh, uh, rehearsing my lines again and again, not only because I wanted to speak fluently, but also because I wanted to prevent speaking too fast. Um, I wanted to be sure that I was standing up straight, hide that I was nervous, always smile. Um, I even took lessons to get rid of my accent. And you probably think that it was to get rid of my accent in English, but no. I'm sure I need lessons for that as well, but I, at that time I needed lessons to get rid of my, my regional Dutch accent. Because that was really bad. <laughs> and uh, I also had, there was something wrong with my voice. Well, I, I did so many things to reach perfection. And in the end, I turned out, well, I, at home, I have a, a, a big pile of old videotapes, and on the bottom of it, I found a tape with one of the first times I was ever on television. And I will show you, I was working for perfection, but something completely <laughs> different came out. <laughs> Dames en heren, jongens en meisjes, goedenavond. Dit is de negentigste aflevering van Ja Natuurlijk. We beginnen meteen met het eerste onderwerp. Heeft u wel eens gehoord van het wolbroekje of van het robijnkeeltje? Van de bosnimf of um, de zonzoeker? Nou, ik moet heel eerlijk zeggen dat ik er in ieder geval nog nooit van gehoord heb. Maar het schijnen allemaal namen te zijn die horen bij een vogelgroep... waarbinnen we de kleinste warmbloedige dieren van deze aarde kunnen vinden. De kolibries. Yeah, <laughs> this was me. <laughs> In uh, 1986, I was 23, and uh, I, I think my friends didn't even really recognize me because I was trying so hard to be perfect. And they really broadcasted this and much more of this, and I kept on doing this for years, working, working, working. And then after maybe 10 years or so, they found me a, a, a presentation coach. And they found really an incredible coach. She was the, the chief editor of the biggest, the most famous Dutch talk show. So, I mean, you can compare it like if you're a soccer player, a six-year-old, and Messi drops by. Something like that. So I was nervous. I was really, really nervous. And uh, she came by, was a nice lady. She sat down and she said, well, I've been uh, watching your program. Well, it's, you're doing a perfect job. Maybe it's, it's, maybe it's a little bit too perfect. I mean, you, you never stop to think. You never say, uh. Actually, I don't know anyone who speaks like that. You're, you're not really a human being. 
And I was so disappointed. I mean, let's be honest, I had been working so hard and now she told me that I was too perfect. But this lesson, I mean, it took maybe, well, a couple of days, maybe longer, before I realized what she said to me. Because what she had actually said to me was, stop presenting and start talking. And this lesson, this lesson really changed everything to me. I mean, I simply had to talk to people like a human being. And if we are able to talk to people and they want to listen to us and even stop and think about what we're saying, then it's perfect. So now, every time uh, I get locked in the bathroom or the sound system fails, or even if you guys are a few minutes late, I try to remind myself of those three words. Talk. Don't present. Thank you. <laughs>